My name is David Hussey. Uh, I'm a senior colorist here at uh, Company 3 in Los Angeles. I grew up in uh, Canada, and uh, I always loved the movies like a lot of us did as youngsters. And uh, I, I decided to go to uh, film school in uh, Ontario. And after uh, film school, uh, I thought maybe I'd become an editor, and I started out as an assistant editor. This was uh, in the early 80s, so uh, color correction was still kind of in its infancy in, in the digital side, or it was analog then. Um, but uh, I went into their room and started talking to the colorist, and uh, he needed an assistant, so uh, I volunteered, and uh, I just gradually started learning how to color then. In uh, short form work, is, uh, for example, like in commercials, uh, you know, the product is king. We want, always want the product to look good. Whereas in a long form, in a film, it's really about the story and telling the story through color. Morning, Mama. What is it? I have to go away for a while. I was told to take a man to a hotel. They said he was an enemy of the state. Take off your dress. And in exchange, my mother would get the doctor she needed. Instead, they cut his throat. The way I became involved uh, in Red Sparrow was that Francis Lawrence, uh, the director of the film, and Yo Willems, the director of photography, uh, had had a discussion and they decided they felt I'd be right to do the film. Um, with both of those uh, men, I've ha had about a 20-year relationship with, uh, with Francis and Yo. Um, back in the early 2000s, uh, they were doing uh, a lot of music videos. Francis has probably done hundreds of music videos and commercials, and uh, I did a lot of his uh, uh, commercials and videos back then. So we knew each other very well. We had spent, uh, you know, these were the film days, so we spent many hours together uh, working together, so we knew each other quite well. I'd also done uh, Francis's first film, uh, Constantine, uh, that was starring Keanu Reeves. I think that was in 2005. Yo had uh, shot much of Francis's work in the past as well, so I had a relationship uh, with Yo, and uh, luckily for me, they had a discussion and decided I would be right for the film, and uh, they chose me, so I was very happy. Yo and Francis both had a very strong idea of how they wanted to f how they wanted the film to look in advance. Um, when Yo initially approached me about the look, he he said that he wanted it to look naturalistic, but also to have some style. So he didn't want it to feel too heavy-handed, but he wanted to uh, come up with a look that felt natural, but still had something to it. And we just discussed different ways of getting there. And uh, we wanted um, to create a LUT uh, s that they could use in production so that when they shot, Yo could uh, and the, his DIT could color on set and be very close to what we hope to achieve in the final online. And uh, that seemed to work pretty well. The uh, initial thing was, though, we had to create this LUT and uh, really kind of fine tune it so that when they were off in Budapest, that you know, they wouldn't have to really work with it too hard. So we tried to get as close as possible. Uh, with, with the look of the LUT while Yo was doing his testing in L.A. So we took several weeks and we tried a lot of different LUTs and we ended up combining some just to, uh, and created kind of our own hybrid LUT that kind of gave, gave us what, what we were looking for. Uh, I think Yo jokingly describes it as enhanced realism and, or naturalism, I think. And I think that's, what, that's, I think that's a, actually a pretty good description of it. It, it feels real, but yet there's there's something else to it. I mean, it, it has a it has its own kind of look. I mean, and the beauty of having the LUT uh, on the set was that people could see what the film was basically going to look like. All of the studio people could see where we were going with it, and uh, Yo just felt comfortable being able to see the dailies looking somewhere close to. Uh, what he wanted. The other benefit to it was that because Yo likes to color on the set uh, while he's shooting, um, he was able to uh, save a lot of stills from all of these setups. So 
later, after they finished shooting, he was able to send me a lot of these color corrected stills that he felt were in the ballpark of what we should do when we did the final color correction. And so that gave me the ability when I was doing my pre-color to get very close to where I know Yo wanted to be uh, in the actual look. So when I was doing the pre-color, um, I spent a little more time on the pre-color than I normally would because I knew that I was going to be very close to what Yo was going for already. So the advantage to that was Yo is a very busy uh, cinematographer, so I didn't have to have him in here sitting with me while I did kind of all the the, the manual labor, so to speak, of uh, you know getting the film in its in its place. So by the time Yo came in, um, we were able to get through the film, uh, you know, reasonably quickly because it was very close to where he wanted to be already. We, we definitely tried to use color as a language in the film. Um, there were some scenes that were very stark and Yo uh, quite often didn't use all that much light because he wanted the realism of the scene to kind of carry through. And uh, there were, uh, to give you an example, uh, in one of the first scenes in the movie, um, uh, Jennifer uh, Lawrence is dancing in the uh, Bolshoi Ballet. And so we went through shot by shot as she's performing and added glow to uh, the theatrical lighting. And uh, it gave it this just this beautiful aura of her fabulous life as the prima ballerina in the, in the Bolshoi Ballet. Um, later in the film, when things are not so good for her, we decided to go much more stark with the colors. Um, and in some of the more intense scenes, we uh, exaggerated the color, you know, just to kind of push through the emotion of what was ever happening in, in the scene. So we, we spent a lot of time thinking about this and how, how we would, how each scene would kind of come off the other. And uh, we would just try, we would try things and see what worked and what didn't. You kind of would have to try something play the scene and see how it connected with the, the next scene. And uh, it, it worked quite well. But we, the, good, the good thing is, because we were able to get so close with the look on the, on the pre-color, on the pre-grade, we had, we had now time to kind of play around and experiment and uh, get Francis's opinion as well on, on uh, how he felt you know, we were going with, with, with the look. So, um, the main, the main thing was, even though all of the scenes have, you know, sometimes extremely different color looks, we still wanted the film to be cohesive and flow together. And that was, that was our main goal, and I think, I think we achieved that. The tools I were using in, in this film uh, was the Resolve, the Blackmagic Resolve, and we were using uh, version 14. Um, so, you know, quite often I was using a lot of tracking and a lot of isolation on colors and the, the Resolve, especially version 14, uh, enabled us to, to do that. Uh, we were working off 16-bit uh, uh, EXR files, which gave us a lot of uh, latitude and our regular uh, Barco projectors. The advice I would give to younger colorists these days is there are a lot of people out there coloring now, far more, thousands more than when I first started out. You have to define who you are as a colorist, and you have to be a, v a very, uh, you have to be a very creative person, and you have to develop relationships with the DP. Relationships in this business are everything, and the way you develop good relationships is to go above and beyond the call of duty when a, a DP wants you to do something you do your best to give him the best possible thing that he's looking for. Sometimes a DP will say, I like this look. When a DP does that for me, I think that looks good, but how can I make it even better? And if you, if you always just keep trying to improve upon your work and develop your relationships, uh, even with uh, DPs and directors who maybe are just starting out, you can have lifelong professional relationships with them. So uh, you just want to surround yourself with other people who are talented and have the same drive that you do. And uh, usually that will work out for you. But I, th I would say definitely define yourself as who you are as a colorist and um, work really hard to keep your relationships good with uh, directors of photography.